Hey everyone, and welcome back for episode 86 of the PATH Podcast. I am Jason. Hey there, I'm Derek. And we are so glad that you have decided to join us on the PATH this week. Uh, we are right in the thick of things in the book of Revelation. Uh, we finished up Revelation chapter 7, and so we'll, we will build on what we talked about last week. It was kind of like you had to get through that, that um, introduction section of chapter 7 last week to get to the real meat of chapter 7 and the rest of it this week. So... Um, Derek, may, maybe I think it might be helpful for us to just think again about what's happening in the grand scheme of the of the story of Revelation right now. Kind of, um, it's that you know we're we're getting a different perspective. It's kind of um, camera angle has changed, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, so may, maybe help us remind us of that, and then let's uh, let's dig into kind of what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, uh, John is walking through the. The, the scrolls and their opening, mm-hmm. uh, that vision that he received about those things. And after the fifth and sixth seal, which were, were real tough, you know, to to see what's happening here. It's just mm-hmm. these colliding kingdoms, yeah. uh, once and for all kind of thing. It's almost like seven is apparent, you know, it's parenthetical, mm-hmm. kind of a pause, kind of a, just like a pullback and just say, hey, yeah, this this these terrible things are happening in the in on the ground in the in the thick of it. Yeah. You know, down in in the in the in the trees, if you will. Mm-hmm. But let's look back and look at the forest and look like what's happening. Yeah. Um, uh, from from beginning of all this to the end of all this kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah, I love that. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but no, that's good. Um, I love that. This is the first. This is really the first of a couple of times that we'll see this through the Book of Revelation, where it's it's really heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, as as you're going through these these seven seals, and you get to the end of that sixth one, and it's like, okay, let's take a breath because mm-hmm. this is heavy. Yeah. Um, and and that's built in there for us. Like Jesus, Jesus was gracious enough mm-hmm. and merciful enough to say. All right, I know that what you just heard was a lot, so let yeah. me let let's let me give you a breath for a second, and let me remind you of this, mm-hmm. uh, which is that's a really cool kind of yeah, I think so, and, and that you know, I mean, Jesus did that. John's exactly. recounting the vision yeah. he received. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, we we have no reason to think that John is not you know just saying, hey, well, I saw this, and then I saw this, and then I saw this, and I heard this, mm-hmm. and I heard this. It's sequ- it's sequential to how he received it. Yeah. Now I do I do think we oftentimes because we're so linear we assume that the things that are happening are like okay the sixth seal happens and then this happens well yeah. I don't think so right I that think, they build on each other yeah. but it, it's in a vision it, it it's not always linear right there's a lot of jumping about even in prophecy of mm-hmm. of the Old Testament and and that that's that's our plumb line in a way you know scripture. The way we interpret scripture matters. Absolutely. The way we uh, do the interpretive work matters. Um, and so, uh, you know, one, I was listening to a podcast, uh, the Blessed Podcast by Nancy Guthrie. Mm. Um, one of her um, guests on her podcast says, We don't look enough in, in Revelation, we don't, look in, we don't go old enough, mm-hmm. and we don't go like in the immediate context enough either. Yeah. And, and that's what I've set out to do as we walk through this is not jump to, oh, well, what does this mean? Or when, yeah. when is this going to happen? Or what are, how is this correlating to what we see in the earth today mm-hmm. and those kind of things? Because I think a lot of times we want to do that. Well, if you do that, you're, you're jumping around in your interpretation, too. You're, right. You're, uh, to use a, theolo- um, a technical term. A technical seminary term. Mm-hmm. Your hermeneutics, right? right? Your, her- your hermeneutic. Which is just your pattern for how you That's interpret. It. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a pattern. Um, mm-hmm. um, so, I want to use Scripture as this, the plumb line of how to interpret Revelation because mm-hmm. I think that's how God intended it. Right. So we look at prophecies of old and see similar things where, you know, you see this portion of this thing's going to happen and it, it's not necessarily necessarily linear. Yeah. Well, I think that's the case with with this kind of pullback moment. Mm-hmm. It's almost as if Jesus, in his vision to John and John's recounting of it, 
is just pulling back to this 30,000 foot view to see the very beginning of the situation and the very beginning and the right. very end of the situation, right? Um, which we can't do. Yeah. We can't yeah. do. Now, movies do that. I was about to say, it's yeah. very cinematic in the yeah, way Yeah, it, it kind of is cinematic, it. yeah. yeah. Uh, so we needed, we needed that to not get stuck. It's, it's that whole, whole, you can't see the forest for the trees. Mm-hmm. It's very easy for us in anything in life to get stuck in the rut of like what's happening around us in that moment. Yeah. So it's very easy for us to look at these seals and be like, oh my goodness, what's happening on the ground here? Yeah. So it's all, it's it's was necessary for, for the vision to pull back and say, okay, here's... Just a reminder. Here's what's going on. Yeah. God is still sovereign. God is still in yep. control. Absolutely. God is still loving and kind. Um, you know, this crashing, you know, these, these four winds are being held back. Yeah. This this crashing kingdom is trying to come in, but the Lord is still sovereign over those things. That's what we see in chapter seven, first few verses. Yeah, uh, and then we see, which is a great reminder, I think, coming yeah. out of chapter six, because yeah. you read through chapter six and go, "Well, holy cow, there's no hope." Yeah. Like these these winds, these four horsemen that are coming are like that. They are all encompassing, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. but then you get this very first verse of chapter seven where God is saying, yeah, you, you guys just hold on. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's not, it was, it's not even a struggle for him. It's not like no. he's struggling to hold him back. He's oh, like, no. Hey, y'all stop. <laughs> yeah. And they did. Yeah. yeah. And they did. Yeah. Yeah. And then so. it's like, we've got to seal those, you know, who, who are going to be sealed. Right. You know? And so he's still sovereign over our protection. He's sovereign over our, uh, what we see in the last part of chapter seven, Yeah, our salvation, mm-hmm. uh, those of us who, who've trusted uh, and the Lord and uh, washed our robes in the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know those, those yeah, yeah. that 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 um, imagery yeah. there. And so you you see that moment of pullback, and it is comforting. It brings strength. It brings strength for us to face what lies ahead of us. Yeah. And um, you know, um, we even talk about the great tribulation, and it uh, it's mentioned here. Mm-hmm. And what is that? And well, you know, I don't know, man. You know, there <laughs> yeah. there are scholars that say it's a host of things. Right. But I think one great point, and something I read, I don't want to take all credit for this, uh, from Daryl Johnson was that uh, number one, that's that uh, the Greek term or the Greek terminology there is megathalipsis, and it just means a great pressing pressure. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's not to minimize what it is or what it could be. It's actually to help us to see that yeah. that the great pressing pressure has been on us yeah, and, since day one, <laughs> and it will be on us, yeah. and it is on us, and it will be on us again. You yeah. know I mean, like it's that whole, you know, just as much as Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we need to know that because the pressure that we will face is the same yesterday, today, and yeah. forever. Like it's uh, now it may have varying intensities but right. it's still a great pressure yeah that I think we a great, face yeah i think a great reminder of that is you don't you don't have to go any further than the book of acts man like yeah. those believers had great pressing pressure oh yeah them. i mean yeah. saul was it, like when saul came to town those believers yeah. were like holy cow this is the great tribulation right yeah. oh, i yeah, mean yeah. you you have, you have to think that this this is the trouble that that jesus was talking about and and yet we think nowadays, like, oh, no, 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 we have it much worse than those did. Last time I checked, we don't have people coming to town looking to kill us because we believe. Yeah. I mean, there are people that experience that yeah, in, in, in the, the world. world yeah, um, world, thank God we don't. But, yeah, Christian go churches, ahead. Yeah. Well, even even Jesus, and see, as soon as Jesus came on the scene, the great pressure pressure. Think about Herod. Yeah. Herod tried to kill Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, think about, you know, I was reading in Luke uh, 3 or 4 this morning where Jesus goes into his own hometown mm-hmm. and preaches and they're ready to stone the stone yeah. him. They're yeah. really they're ready to kill him. Yeah. And then he was he's able to get away. So it's it's evidence again that the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ and his kingdom yeah. entering to this world began this great gnawing and nagging of this other kingdom that had kind of established itself yeah. over you know many many years yeah. and so uh, I think you know um, will there be a, a great tribulation again yes mm-hmm. was that you know was it is like, there a great tribulation now yes <laughs> yeah was there mm-hmm. great, yes exactly so yeah. I, I think that's the point is that it's it's 
and we can't we can't and this is the hermeneutic we we yeah. we we've entered in the 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 framework of mm-hmm. how we're looking at revelation to interpret it it is primarily a letter written to seven churches mm-hmm. experiencing the great pressing pressure at that moment yeah uh, and John's basically saying it's only going to get worse. Yeah. So uh, we see it there, and then we we come over and see how these truths and these this hope, yeah, and this faith is injected into their veins. Mm-hmm. And, and this passage can be ours as a well mm-hmm. for for the great pressing pressure that we face. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Which is a great, I think it's a great reminder at this point to remember that we we talked, we may have mentioned this early on when we were looking at Revelation, but that you, you can't, you can't change your hermeneutic in the middle of a book. Mm-hmm. It, this is an apocalyptic book, letter that was written to churches. So you have to interpret from chapter one, verse one, all the way through chapter 22, like mm-hmm. the same way. You have mm-hmm. to interpret it that same way. You can't pick and choose. Um, and uh, and I think that if we if we remember first and foremost, and we've talked about this, but that the, the book of Revelation is not some, it's not a mystery novel that we're trying to figure out what these things mean and say. It's a reminder, first and foremost, to seven churches that are in Asia Minor, but also a reminder to the church at, at, at large that no matter what you face, God is still on his throne. Mm-hmm. No matter what you face, you find hope in Jesus. Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, it's it's funny that we get to chapter 7 and say, look, this is where we find hope. But you, we've seen that over and over and over oh, again yeah. already. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. hey, hey, hope in Christ. Yeah, I know life is hard, but hope in Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know that what you're going through is difficult, but hope in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and it, I think it, that's that's a good... If you want to talk about a step back moment, mm-hmm. let's let's not let, let's look at the entire forest. If you mm-hmm. will, to use your, your illustration, the forest is hope in Christ. Yeah. No matter what's going on around you, no matter what rut you're stuck in, mm-hmm. we find hope in Christ. Well, and Revelation is unique. And that, it is, yeah. You know, it's not a mystery. I think it's a great way to say it. It is unique, but it's only because there there are three different literary types. Yeah. Put into one the the letter, mm-hmm. so it's very much like the Book of Romans, mm-hmm. which is a letter to the Roman Church. It, it, the, this is a letter to seven churches, but it, it's yeah. very much it has you you interpret it in a similar way. Mm-hmm. It's it's an unveiling. That's the word p- apocalypse. We yeah. always think apocalypse means end times. Apocalypse there literally just means it's an a Greek unveiling, word. Unveiling, yeah. yeah, an unveiling. And what is it unveiling? Jesus, yeah, in all His glory, mm-hmm. it's it's like the Mount of Transfiguration mm. uh, on steroids. Yeah, it's this moment of oh my goodness, that's who Jesus is. And remember what what did James, John, and Peter do when they encountered that? Like, yeah. let's worship Him right now. Let's right. drop everything, build a temple right here, mm-hmm. worship Jesus right here. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, build an altar here. Yeah, and so this is this unveiling. Mm-hmm. You know, and John was there to see the first one in, right. in the, at the Mount of Transfiguration. And here it's like, oh, uh, it's it's expanding that out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the third is prophecy. And that's where it's very important for us to lean heavily on Old Testament prophecy and mm-hmm. how those works. A lot of those are referenced here. Yeah. Uh, the, the vision that Jesus gives references themes and ideas that have been presented before yeah so uh it is unique because it it mushes all three of those together sure but it you're right it's not something we it it was it was written so people could know things yeah there's no there's no secret code here yeah Yeah. there's no secret code here that you Mm -hmm. have to dig and unveil right yeah yeah, very good. That's so right. that's that's where we're at. We're, we we pulled back, mm-hmm. to answer your question in a long way, Yeah, we pulled back and we get to see, you know, the, the four winds being held back so that people can be sealed. We see that uh, a great multitude come out of all that and mm-hmm. we see them at the end at the throne of Jesus and what he's doing in eternity for them. Yeah, And that's where we got our hope uh, for this message. We, we saw three things. Yeah, it could have been more, I'm sure, mm-hmm. but three main things that 
and that Jesus is shelter and shepherd yeah. uh, for his uh, blood bought people. Yeah, and um, and uh, that gives me hope, mm-hmm. um, uh, and I hope it does others as well. Yeah, so. absolutely. So one one of the things you talked about um, yesterday was how it, Jesus as our shepherd is that he he leads us to the throne and that that we find help there um and so maybe for just a second let's talk about what 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 is it that we um that we what is it that we gain as believers by jesus revealing more of himself to us um so like you know the fact the fact that we have this zoom out for a second this breath what, what is that revealing to us about Jesus, and, and how does that affect our walk as believers uh, with him shepherding us in that way? Yeah, I mean, I think it helps us to see in high definition what Scripture has been saying all along, mm, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think about... Um, Romans, um, Romans wrote is it Romans three twenty three for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm-hmm. Romans six twenty three uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in mm-hmm. Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, Romans five eight but God demonstrates His love toward us in that while we were still sinners, mm-hmm. still stained by sin, Christ died for us. And then I think of Romans 8, 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Why? That's SD Yeah. in a way. This is HD. Mm-hmm. We get to see what we'll be like at the throne of Christ. Mm-hmm. We are cleansed completely. Yeah. So no longer are sinners. We are no longer under condemnation because our sin has been washed white. Yeah. And so you see that again and again recurring in even this vision in this moment is that these these this multitude from every nation, tribe, and tongue is clothed in white robes, mm-hmm. yeah. waving palm branches saying, salvation belongs to our God. Yeah. We're here because of Him. Mm. We're cleansed because of Him. So you see it in high definition, right? You yeah. see... Uh, and, um, <laughs> Stunning detail. Yeah, I think that's why I needed wordier points because it's like we're <laughs> yeah. we're sheltered in the sin bleaching righteousness of God. So it's yeah. God's blood and His righteousness that covers us and mm-hmm. shelters us, yeah. so that we're able to even be at the throne, right. but not at the throne like on our knees saying, "Oh Lord, how, you know, uh, I have no business being here." Yeah. We still have that posture, but it's. I'm here because Christ has made me clean. Yeah. I'm clean. He told me I could be here. Yeah. I'm clean because yeah. of him. And it says later on, 13 and 14, that uh, those are the ones that the, they're, they wash their robes in the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so we see that in high definition. We see in high definition that, you know, so I think about SD, uh, standard definition, mm-hmm. to use that terminology, is like, uh, the uh, the beatitudes, uh, mm. the fourth beatitude: blessed are those who hunger and uh, thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Right. Yeah. So that's SD, right? I think about the woman at the well. We mentioned this, yeah. you know, and Jesus says, "Hey, I've got some living water that trumps that water you're getting. If you drink of it, you'll never thirst again." You know, and and um, I see that as kind of SD or a shadow of what's coming. And here in this moment. These people are at the throne, mm-hmm. never hungering, yeah. never thirsting again, because they are satisfied yeah. in their Savior. Mm-hmm. So it's the high definition uh, version of that yeah. in that moment, right? And then um, that um, we are ushered to the throne of God. Mm-hmm. At the very center of the throne of God is the Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. It's it's the epitome of the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ yeah. for us that is at the very center and heart of the throne. We've seen that in, mm-hmm. in, in, in uh, chapter 4 and 5. That's where he ushered us, ushers us, ushers us yeah. and wipes away our tears and takes us to those waters of life yeah. uh, that, that help us to thirst no more. And it's in that moment that we can say, 
that that in HD mm. I have I have the faith enabling strength mm-hmm. of Jesus at at my disposal. Yeah. The SD version of that is like Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians five, it's you know stand firm. Yeah. Therefore, uh, it gives us the armor of God. That's mm-hmm. the SD version. Here in the th- center of the throne of God is the HD version. Yeah. We and we get to see Him and are covered by Him, and we don't need the armor anymore because right. we're sheltered in Christ. Yeah, absolutely. And we're shepherded in yeah. Christ. We're we're there in this this high definition moment of right. His glory, protecting us, covering us, ushering us in. And so it's it's all those things that we've learned from the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it's just gradually, and then it's like um, this vibrant, yeah. uh, clear uh, picture. It's like going into Sam's or Costco <laughs> yeah. and seeing those giant, giant <laughs> you know, 100 foot or whatever, 80 inch, 100 inch, uh, you know, and there's what, the QHD or the Q, <laughs> right. uh, QELED or the QHLED or the... Yeah. Whatever the new letter, yeah, whatever the letters are, yeah. and it's vibrant. It's like, dang man, that looks like a real picture. Yeah. Like that, it's like you could push your fingers in it and touch yeah. it. You know, what I mean, but it and so that's like what the throne of God is like. It's like everything else is just any haze, mm-hmm. any kind of uh, impediment is washed away. And here is this yeah, clear um, picture, clear picture of who Jesus is and what is afforded to you and I. Yeah, when. Um, Paul says we are um, joint heirs with Christ. Mm-hmm. Here's our inheritance yeah. in cl- crystal clear, you know, um, uh, uh, high definition. Yeah, so. I love that. It, it's um, I love that it, we, we talked about it as the faith enabling. Um, how do we say it? the faith enabling center of Christ's throne? Because seeing a picture like this, it does enable our faith, knowing that there will come a day. We won't need faith anymore yeah. because we'll be we'll be able to see it'll be right in front of our face. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. don't have to believe. Right. We don't have to have. Yeah, I, I believe that that's out there. It's no, no, no. It's right here. Yeah. Like I don't have to have faith anymore. My mm-hmm. faith has become sight. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's if if that doesn't give you comfort, I I wonder if you even know who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't mean to make anybody question their faith, but mm-hmm. if the if the hope and the the expectation and anticipation of being able to see Christ face to face one day does not bring you comfort and joy. What, what are you, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what, what are, what are we following after here? Yeah. Um, and it's for me, I mean, I, I get excited thinking, thinking oh, about yeah. stuff like this, you know? Oh, yeah. And, um, and so I think it's, it's just a great reminder. Um, because as, as we've talked about here before, you know, uh, life, life is hard. Like we face difficult things and they, they we face things that seem like, God, why in the world are you letting me go through this? And it, it, all of that, we can we can we can um, agree with Paul's words and say <clears throat> the things that I have to deal with here are not even worth comparing mm-hmm. to the glory that comes. Mm-hmm. Like there's no comparison here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even though the the most difficult thing that you may face on earth does not even bear comparison to being in front of Jesus mm-hmm. one day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's just a great reminder. I think that it's it's something that is very easy to forget at oh, yeah. times. Yeah. It's easy to forget. Yeah. So. Well, it's easy for our focus to be mm. on this world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the kingdom of this world. And what Revelation helps us to do is it helps us to train our eyes mm-hmm. on the on the kingdom of God and what is to come. Yeah. And um, I think that's why in the end it says, don't neglect studying this don't neglect yeah. reading this and if you will you will be blessed mm-hmm. you will be blessed uh, and so often we avoid it right because it's hard to mm-hmm. understand and trust me it's I'm, yeah, it's hard to prepare it's for it's hard <laughs> it is hard yeah. um, and uh, you know but it's it is it is rewarding like mm-hmm. um, you know I, I, preparing yesterday's message just was like a balm for mm. me, for me to just say, "Wow, Lord, you're amazing. Mm-hmm. You are amazing, and what you've done, what you're doing, yeah. and what you will do, is a masterpiece that I couldn't imagine yeah. coming up with myself." Yeah, 
and uh, even trying to understand it and convey it in a way where others can understand. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like la- I feel like I lack <clears throat> the ability to do that, but uh, I'm trying. So um, yeah. and trusting God to fill in all the gaps. So, mm. but uh, yeah. but it's good. It's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, any any final thoughts? No, I, I think this was a longer episode than last one, so yeah. we did good. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> well, this is then where we turn it over to you. We would love to know, what what has God been showing you? What has God reminded you? Is there anything in your faith that has grown? Anything in your walk with Christ that is advancing as we work through the book of Revelation? Or even through the summer when we were talking about the Proverbs, uh, we'd love to know. You can email us at thepath at lafayettefirst.life. That's where you can get in contact with us. Or you can comment right on this YouTube video if you're watching this later in the week. If you're listening to it earlier in the week, email us. Use that email address, the path at lafayettefirst.life. Um, but take the opportunity to share this with people so that they know that we're back, that season five is going strong, uh, and we can begin this conversation again of talking through the book of Revelation. But until next time, I am Jason. I'm Derek. And we hope that you will join us as we continue down the path.